Good afternoon. Welcome to Blandwood Mansion. My name is Paige. I'll be your docent this afternoon. You may have noticed Blandwood is a National Historic Landmark. It does date back to 1795, which predates the founding of the city of Greensboro. It is the oldest structure that is still sitting on its original foundations in the city. A number of historians across the state of North Carolina really consider Blandwood to be the center of North Carolina history. Blandwood is one of the treasures that makes Greensboro the city that it is today. Now, the first portion of the house was a four-room farmhouse. It was built in 1795 by a man named Charles Bland. And even though we're in the heart of downtown Greensboro today, in reality in 1795, this would have been a rural setting. And so Charles Bland built it in the middle of a wood, and the name Blandwood sort of stuck with the home. So at one point, the nucleus of this home sat on a hillside surrounded by nothing but fields and forests. Through the past 200 years, the city of Greensboro developed around this building so that today, what is downtown Greensboro represents an entirely different view from the windows of this house than what people experienced in the 18th and 19th centuries. And this is a southern family that were slaveholders. Now the people who would have been doing the labor in the kitchen would have been slaves and this warming pantry allowed them to walk directly from the kitchen, which is a separate building, into the house and they could use these two pantries here, these two cupboards on either side. In 1827, Blandwood was purchased by a gentleman named John Motley Moorhead, more commonly known today as Governor John Motley Moorhead. In 1840, Moorhead is elected governor of North Carolina. And it's painted to show that this is a, a really important part of the house where the governor and his wife are going to entertain because he's an important man in, in North Carolina. One of the premier governors, in fact, uh, the governor that's considered by many people to be the father of modern North Carolina in terms of establishing a transportation network that we have today, an emphasis on good quality education that's open to all citizens of North Carolina, and a good social network. All these things were started and initiated by Governor Moorhead and have been built on since uh, he was governor in the 1840s. And Moorhead just really kind of exemplified what could become of Greensboro and actually what could become of the state of North Carolina. So the room that we're walking into now is the ladies parlor. And there isn't this feature in any other house in North Carolina. It's very unusual, and it's an innovation of the architect Alexander Jackson Davis. Alexander Jackson Davis is the architect who designed the Italianate addition to Blandwood. It is the first of its kind um, built not only in North Carolina, but in the United States. And securing A.J. Davis, who is a prominent national architect, uh, calling him into Greensboro to design this house. The statement was that Greensboro was part of the national community. It was part of an, a national conversation about architecture and design that we were on par with New York City and any other major city and seaport along the east coast of the United States. We do have some of the drawings that um, Alexander Jackson did for Blandwood. Um, his floor plan that he did in 1844, which the original is still located and can be seen today at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. We do have a copy of it here at Blandwood that people can see when they tour the house. And the occupant of this room was Letitia, and she's the eldest daughter of the governor and his wife, Ann Eliza, and she's really my favorite Moorhead in the whole family. She was really very much a Renaissance woman, and we've got lots of personal items in this particular room that belong to her. For example, over here you see this painting that she did, and this is quite remarkable. This is a, an image that the Governor and his wife, Ann Eliza, had eight children, the oldest of whom was Letitia. And Letitia does get married in 1848 to William Walker. William doesn't live very long. He passes away in 1855, and Letitia and her three children do move back to Blandwood. She was one of the founders of the Mount Vernon Ladies Association. This was the organization that helped save Mount Vernon, which was George Washington's home. At the time when the Mount Vernon Ladies Association purchased the house, it was falling apart in disrepair. So these women were the first preservationists. The Moorheads, youngest son Eugene, whom Eugene Street in Greensboro is named after, inherited the house. So he does eventually sell the house to his sister and her husband, Emma and Julius Gray. And they live here until their respective deaths. At that time, the descendants of the Moorheads are approached by an organization called the Keeley Institute. Um, Keeley Institutes had become very popular um, right after the Civil War with the invention of a gentleman named Dr. Keeley who created the Gold Cure. He works with another surgeon and they create a hospital-like setting in Dwight, Illinois. 
The successful patients create franchises throughout the United States and William Osborne opened one here in Greensboro and then they moved it to Blandwood in 1896. There was a Keeley Institute in Blandwood from 1896 until 1961. So once the Healy Institute closes in 1961, the house actually sits vacant for about five years. And by 1966, what we know today as Preservation Greensboro does purchase Blandwood. They spent 10 years restoring the main building. The first tours to the public were in, in 1976. They then created what was called the Blandwood Guild, and that was a group of women who were responsible for running the house and getting all the interiors set up, all the furnishings. They worked with some of the direct descendants of the Moorhead family, and that is how we got the majority of our original furnishings back in the house. Blandwood is open six days a week to the public for tours. There is a fee to attend. We also do numerous special events throughout the years, which of course are posted on our website at all times. One of our most well-attended events is Ghost Stories at Blandwood. Of course, as an old house, people always assume that we're haunted, so they always want to come and hear the ghost stories. We do Christmas at Blandwood, which is where we really focus on antebellum Christmas decorations. You will not see a Christmas tree when you come to tour Blandwood, but you have to tour to find out why. Every Sunday in September, we offer music on the back porch of Blandwood. We do a lot of events in conjunction with the city of Greensboro. When you think of other major cities across the country, think of San Antonio, Texas and the Alamo, think of Charlottesville, Virginia and Monticello, uh, think of Independence Hall in Philadelphia. These are cities that are defined by their architecture. Greensboro is part of that family. Blandwood is Greensboro's primary building. It's the building that a lot of people think of when they think of Greensboro and it really defines the culture of our city. It documents the history and the growth of our town, and it documents the important things that have happened in Greensboro. Many of them have happened here on the grounds of Blandwood.